The Ukrainian city of Lviv, close to the border with Poland, has been hit by the first missile strikes in the west of the country in more than a week. The city's mayor said three electricity substations have been damaged. Parts are without power, including some medical facilities. He said there's also serious damage to infrastructure and interruptions to the water supply. Russia's bombardment of a steelworks in the besieged southern port city of Mariupol has intensified after the first civilians were able to leave and reach safety. The UN says most are now in the city of Zaporizhia, where, from where Laura Bicker reports. Their journey from hell is over. Two months of horror ends in exhaustion and relief. Katarina spent weeks hidden in the depths of the Azovstal steel plant as Russian bombs pounded the site. She tried to tell her children that everything would be okay, even when she didn't believe it herself. How we were living, uh, to be honest, it was horrible. From morning until night, we were bombarded. Artillery, rockets, airstrikes. Our children couldn't sleep. They were crying. They were scared, and us as well. There were several times when we were losing hope that we would never get out. We are extremely glad to be in Ukraine. For more than 60 days, these women and children were stuck in the darkness, living on rations handed down by Ukrainian soldiers. It's been a difficult and complex operation to free them. We lived in hope that every day would be the last day in this hell, that we would go home to a peaceful Mariupol, but now it is non-existent. This evacuation represents rare progress to ease the humanitarian cost of this war, but hundreds more did not manage to make it on this bus. They are thought to still be trapped within the steel plant, including around a dozen children, and talks are still underway to free them. This footage from social media is said to show the Azovstal steelworks under heavy attack from Russian forces. This once thriving industrial heartland is now a charred shell. Later in the video, Russian tanks are seen patrolling what remains of the streets and park areas surrounding the huge factory. There are thought to be nearly 100,000 people still living in Mariupol. I don't know where to go at all. I am not alone. Imagine, everything is destroyed, everything is broken. Where should the people go now? Here, they are sitting there with small kids, with little ones. I've got nowhere to go. For those who have made it out, finally they have fresh food and a little hope. Lives have been saved, but many more hang in the balance. Laura Bicker, BBC News, Zaporizhia. Let's go to Lviv in the west of Ukraine and talk to BBC's Joe Inwood. Uh, Joe, first two events in Lviv itself. Tell, tell us what happened with those missile strikes. Yeah, so it was about eight o'clock or so and we were actually out in the centre of town having dinner when suddenly you could hear this rumble in the distance. Our, our cameraman Rob was the one that heard it. And, and you could feel the mood change. This is a city that has quite often felt quite far removed from the war. Lots of people coming, fleeing the fighting come here, but actually it hasn't been subject to that many strikes. But last night, I think that sense of complacency, possibly you could call it, that has settled for some people here was shaken. We had three strikes, three missiles hit power substations. As everyone sort of cleared out the restaurant and went to have a look, you could see these big plumes of smoke rising in the distance. And we understand what had happened is that these missiles are taken out the power infrastructure, targeting the railway networks. Now, of course, those networks have been crucial in getting heavy equipment to the front line, heavy equipment supplied by NATO, supplied by the European Union, supplied by the UK and the US. Uh, and what the Russians, it seems, are trying to do is to cut that supply of the weaponry off at the source, and the source, some of it, is here in Lviv. Joe, we saw there in Laura's report from Zaporizhia regarding people who've left Mariupol a final taste of freedom uh, for people who've not seen daylight for more than 60 days. Uh, what about the people still left behind? Not just those in the steelworks, but those in the wider city, tens of thousands still there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's worth drawing a distinction between those two groups you mentioned. The ones still trapped in the steelworks are in 
the most appalling conditions. One can barely imagine what it's like, not just to have very limited supplies of food and water, not to have seen daylight, but also to be under that incredible bombardment that we've heard about for days and days. It must be an astonishingly traumatic experience that they're going through. The people in the wider city are in a slightly different position, still perilous, still very, very difficult, I'm sure. But some of them probably are happy to stay, have made the choice to, but a large number, as we heard in Laura's report there, that, that lady who was sitting in the middle of that kind of wasteland, the bombs going off as she spoke to, spoke to reporters, she has no choice. She can't leave. She doesn't have anywhere to go. And even if she did, there's fear that the route out of Mariupol, unless you are accompanied by the United Nations or the Red Cross, as has been the case for the people coming out of the Azovstal steelworks, well, it is still a dangerous journey and one people are probably afraid or unable to make. Okay, Joe, for now, thank you very much. Joe Inwood in Lviv, in the west of Ukraine.